plantar fasciitis is a common cause of pain in the heel, caused by damage to the plantar fascia, which is a band of connective tissue running from the heel to the base of the toes. Plantar refers to the underside of the foot, while fasciitis means inflammation of the fascia, though more recently it is thought that it may be due to degeneration rather than inflammation, which would be termed fasciosis. More specifically, the plantar fascia has been described as an aponeurosis, meaning a flattened tendon. It originates from the medial aspect of the calcaneal tuberosity in the heel and attaches to the base of the toes, the metatarsals. Plantar fasciitis has typically been considered an overuse injury. The exact mechanism, however, is not currently known, though biopsies have shown micro tears as well as patterns of collagen degeneration and repair. As mentioned, the name suggests inflammation, though it is now thought that inflammation may not be present and degeneration is a more accurate description. The classic presentation features heel pain that is at its worst when taking the first few steps after a period of rest, such as walking to the bathroom in the morning. This is termed post-static dyskinesia. It tends to worsen gradually throughout the day with use, and generally then improves with rest. It is usually in one heel, but can be in both in around 1 in 3 patients and is most commonly a sharp pain on the anterior medial side of the heel. At times, this may also radiate to the outer, lateral side of the heel. Commonly, the pain is worse when walking barefoot or on hard flooring, and the history is usually of a gradual onset rather than suddenly after trauma. It is most common between the ages of 40 and 60 years, with roughly equal effect on males and females. There is a direct correlation with BMI where a BMI above 30 is associated with a 5 to 6 times increase in risk. Runners are also at an increased risk with up to 20% of them thought to be affected. It is estimated that 1 in 10 people in the United States will develop it at some point in their lives. Another risk factor is gastrocnemius or gastroxoleus equinus, where there is an inability to reach 10 degrees of dorsiflexion at the ankle joint, which leads to increased strain on the plantar fascia during walking, predisposing to fasciitis. Others include pes cavus or planus, meaning feet with a particularly high or low medial longitudinal arch respectively. Prolonged standing is another risk factor. A diagnosis is clinical, meaning no specific lab test or imaging is needed, and it is instead based on the history and physical exam. A point of tenderness is usually found on palpation, and extension of the big toe can often reproduce symptoms, which is called the windlass sign. Generally, there are no signs of swelling or erythema, and lateral squeezing of the heel should not be overly tender, a finding more suggestive of a stress fracture. In cases where conservative management is not working, further investigations exploring other diagnoses can include testing for rheumatoid factor, anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide or CCP antibodies, and imaging such as x-ray or MRI looking for causes like stress fracture or radiological evidence of spurring that could suggest a seronegative arthritis like seritic or reactive arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis. Overall, it is a self-limiting condition, though usually takes 6 to 18 months to resolve. Initial management includes a combination of lifestyle modification such as activity changes weight loss if relevant, as well as changes to footwear to include those with arch support and cushioned heels. Analgesics commonly used include paracetamol and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen or naproxen, 
though are generally considered to be most effective in the earlier stages. Splinting, which can include those at night, or antipronation taping, also called low dye taping, can help reduce stress on the plantar fascia and give pain relief. Physiotherapy, including stretching of the plantar fascia and Achilles, particularly as it is thought that contracture at night can contribute to the irritation to the plantar fascia. Ultrasound-guided corticosteroid injections can be considered, though these also come with a risk of complications like infection and rupture of the fascia, though pain is the most common adverse effect. Symptom resolution from steroid injections tends to be only for several weeks. In those who do not respond to conservative measures after 12 months, which is roughly 1 in 10 people, further options include extracorporeal shockwave therapy, with 70% of patients reporting an improvement at 3 months, or surgical intervention, such as a plantar fascia release. Recovery is often slow, but most patients do see an improvement.